what's up guys this is church of caboose and for today's destiny 2 video we're gonna do like a gambit 101 kind of a thing because i feel like it's it's about time that i did a video about gambits and i'll tell you guys about why here shortly but first if you enjoy the video please click the like button feel free to share this video with all those folks that you believe could uh use some i guess like going to school for gambits and uh, subscribe to my channel, especially if you want to see more videos like this. Raid guides, uh, most efficient progress for quests, uh, and just general shenanigans. I do want to do a Church Fails video at some point. Uh, I do lots of bad, weird things in the game like Miss Thunder Crashes that come out pretty funny. And my wife thinks I should do a video with all that. So if you want to see all those good things, then make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel. And feel free to hit the bell so that way you get notified every time I post a video. Alright, so what are the objectives of Gambit and Gambit Prime? Well, they both essentially work the same way. So we're just going to first give the differences between Gambit and Gambit Prime. Gambit is best out of three rounds. And if you get to the third round, you have like a super round where you don't have to do any of the other objectives. It's just kill a boss. And then Gambit Prime is just one round. And you whoever's the first to bank their, all their moats and then kill their boss wins. So that's kind of the difference between the two rounds. And then Gambit Prime, you have to like unlock damage phase, whereas in Gambit, the regular version, damage phase is always prevalent. And I guess that's the kind of the difference in the damage phase. So what are the objectives of Gambit and Gambit Prime? Well, first you have to kill enemies. And then once you kill those enemies, you have to grab the moats they drop and bank those moats into the bank. If you bank those moats in groups of five to to 9 or 10 to 14 or 15 then you send a blocker over to the other side if you do five moats you send a small blocker which is a taken hobgoblin that can shield your other enemies and their best at shielding bosses and the other blockers if you send over 10 moats then you get to send over a, a taken captain and you know they're taken captains are just really annoying because of their shield shadowy blasty thing and if you send over 15 moats then you send over a taken knight and that is a large blocker and if you're running a full collector armor set which you can get from the reckoning you can grab up to 20 moats and send over an ultra which is like a like the cabal dude if that was the boss of the uh the the taken strike on the edz i'm blanking on what that's called but that's okay all right so now that you have all those those like the general gist you once you get all those moats banked gambit is 75 gambit prime is 100 then you spawn in a boss and whoever kills their boss first wins like that's the objective of the game but there's some interesting ob ob obstacles you can incur that impede your progress or you can use to impede the other team's progress. So we're gonna talk about those a little bit. And if you guys feel like you're getting really confused, I'm doing my best to explain this the simplest way I can. Gambit combines the best parts of PVP and PVE into one activity. So things can be a little bit tricky, which is a lot of why I'm trying to make this video. Okay, so what are the obstructions that can make or they like impede your progress or the other team's progress. So one would be blockers, two are invaders. What blockers do is they close down your bank. So let's say you and your teammate send over two blockers. You put in a small blocker, the other team puts in a small block, or you, the, your teammate puts in a small blocker. So you put two blockers on the other side, that shuts down the other team's bank. And so until those blockers are killed, the other team is unable to bank their moats. Hopefully you guys are tracking. The same thing goes with your side. If you are in Gambit Prime, if you send over two blockers to the other team, those blockers drain their bank of moats. So if they had 20 moats in their bank, for example, and you send over two blockers, you could, in theory, drain out the other team's bank all the way to zero if they do not kill those blockers, or if you're able to put in more blockers than they can kill, so that way there's always at least two blockers on the other side. So you guys tracking with how blockers can impede your progress and impede the other team's progress? I hope so. If not, let me know down below, and I'll do my best to try and explain it some more. Okay, now invaders. Invaders can also impede progress. What they do is uh, Gambit Prime, and the invader causes the bank to shut down. Once there's a, an invader in there, especially if they have on the invader armor set, the, can, the, other, the team who are invading cannot bank their moats. And it's best to invade when you have blockers there, so that way they got blockers to deal with, and you are invading. Invaders can also 
kill and take away the other team's moats. So let's say I invaded the other team. And then I killed a dude who was carrying 15 moats. Well, that guy no longer has 15 moats, and those moats don't just drop on the ground where any other teammate can pick them up. They're just gone. They're no longer available on the map. So you can use invaders to get rid of other teams' moats. So there's all kinds of strategies based around when you should put in blockers and when you should invade. So we're going to cover one, actually two really common strategies. Strategy number one, that is a pain in the butt to deal with unless you are the one doing it. Wait for the other team to bank their moats first. When everyone spawns in, most people are able to easily go clear out the first wave of ads, and typically you'll between your like, team, you'll probably have 15 to 20 moats held at a given time. The first team that banks usually is going to be the team that's going to fall behind immediately after. Now, why is that? Well, when the other team banks, especially in Gambit Prime, they now have moats in their bank, so all you have to do to get rid of those moats is kill the blockers that came to your side and then bank your moats. And if you bank two or more, you then drain the moats of the other team that would, that just banked until they get rid of at least one of those blockers. I hope that is making sense. If not, please let me know down below. Strategy that is pretty popular, number two. Save up for a bunch of blockers, put all those blockers in at once, and then someone immediately invades. It's pretty chaotic when you've got a couple of uh, taken knights and taken captains and hobgoblins, and you have an invader coming in trying to destroy all of your moats. And that can be uh, pretty tricky to try and deal with, which is great for the team that pulled off that strategy, and not so great for the team that is having to deal with it. Now, how can you combat the blockers and the invaders? Well, for blockers, I would suggest having something in your inventory that is a heavy damage dealing weapon. It could be something like a mountaintop, could be like mind benders, like a shotgun, or like, like a loaded question, like a fusion rifle. Those are great for taking down blockers quickly. I would also suggest you put on some sort of a mod that gives you super energy for getting kills with that particular weapon, but that gets more detailed than this video is going to get into, so that's just kind of the only tip we're, like, as far as into that as we're going to get. Then for uh, the invading and dealing with invaders, I would highly suggest you guys have some kind of a machine gun or a rocket launcher, particularly one that can track or that you feel really confident in getting kills with. I myself love using truth. Then if you are the one that plans on invading regularly, I would make sure you're using supers that make the most sense for what you are going to be doing with your invasions. Like I like using a uh, top tree Nova bomb, a uh, blade barrage and Titan smash when I do my invasions as well as running a truth or a thunderlord so that way i have really easy kills now what can you do to make it harder for that invader like me to get kills on you this might backfire on me if this video gets popular enough all right if you have a lot of moats i just just run the other way try and figure out what direction the invader is coming from learn where the invaders tend to spawn at because every map you'll be able to eventually be like okay so here's what's going on in this area with all the ads so i know that it's likely for the blocker or the invader to come from one of these other areas on this map and that really helps you out to know where to expect the invader to come from because if you have a lot of moats and they and the invader kills you then you just lost your team all of those moats the other thing you can do is if you don't have very many moats i would say five or less you can try and uh, initiate an attack against that invader it takes time for that invader to deal with you. It kind of will throw them off their rhythm, especially if they're like, oh, look, there's like that dude with 15 moats hiding with that guy that's got 10 moats, hiding with that guy that's got 12 moats. I want to go for them. And then boom, out of nowhere, they're being attacked by the guy with like three moats. I'm like, oh, crap. So they're trying to not die and to, they have to deal with you, which wastes seconds off of their invasion time because invaders are only allowed to be there for, I believe it's 15 seconds in Gambit and about 30 in Gambit's Prime. And that you just buy your team a little bit of time. And if you lose to the invader, not a big deal. You only lost five or less moats. And if you win, then you definitely saved your team from potentially a tragic loss and a heartbreaking moment where you have to try and really make a big comeback in order to keep up and get your primeval, uh, I guess, oh, in the arena around the same time as the other team. Does this make sense to you guys so far? I hope, I hope it does. Okay, then for the boss damage part, there is a couple of tactics with what you should be doing as far as what kinds of weapons you can use and like when you're using them as well as how to deal with the invader. So we're gonna first start off with how the boss damages work 
between Gambit and Gambit Prime, and then how I recommend you guys deal with damage and invading slash invaders. All right, and Gambit, the boss damage is just continuous. In Gambit Prime, you have to kill envoys. Once you've killed three envoys, you get a little well that's like on the ground. It's pretty obvious. It looks kind of like a warlock rift, and that will give you an extra little buff, and the shield will come down off of the boss man, the prime evil that you're trying to kill. You do not have to be in that well in order to do damage to the boss man, but you do get an extra buff of damage. In both modes, on the lower left hand of your screen, you should notice uh, something that's called prime evil slayer. And eventually the numbers will go up. You start off with Primeval Slayer, and you can go up to Primeval Slayer like 4, for example. The higher number your Primeval Slayer is, the more damage you will do, regardless of if you're in the Rift, or if you're just running around. In Gambit, there's no Rift. In Gambit Prime, there is a Rift that gives you extra damage. So, with that in mind, that leads into when you should be using what weapons then. I would never suggest using supers or heavy ammo on the first primeval round. So if you're in Gambit and you're in that first well, it is a waste of your super and your heavy to use those uh, things on the very first round of damage because you have the least possible damage and odds are you're gonna need at least two, maybe three or four damage rounds anyways in order to kill your primeval assuming everything goes to plan. Then when you're in regular Gambit, the same thing, only the damage is continuous, but you still have the primeval numbers that go up. So I would first focus on killing two of those major wizards, and then you are able to do even more damage onto the boss man and just pay attention to the numbers. I personally don't use things like supers and rockets until I'm at per, uh, primeval slayer three, unless I'm with a full fire team and we got stuff coordinated, and then we usually use our heavy and our supers on primeval two. And if you think we'll need a third round, then we'll save them for three or four. All right. Hopefully the damage phase makes sense. If not, let me know down below. For invading, invasions are frequent during the primeval uh, phase on both Gambit's and Gambit's Prime. You will have lots of invaders. It's pretty much continuous. Uh, and Gambit's regular Gambit, it's about 15 or 20 seconds after your invader comes back back that the portal opens again and then in Gambit Prime the portal opens depending upon uh, how fastly the other team gets to their damage phases. Hopefully you guys are tracking with how continuous the invasion portals are. So you're going to have a lot of invaders to deal with. When you are in Gambit or actually well, really either mode when you die that energy goes back to your primeval. So if your primeval is absolute meaning he's like 10% health or less and then the invader comes and say they get a team wipe that primeval will get a significant like recharge of their health and you'll have to redo damage to that boss so it's very important to, to not die to invaders during primeval phases when you're trying to do all that damage and gambit prime there's a way that you can try to minimize that damage and, and age yourself and gambit just kind of continuous when primeval or gambit prime you can kind of rig it up a little bit it is pretty common in gambit prime for invaders to invade either right before you're going to do damage phase, so as you're working on that third envoy, or in the middle of it. Uh, that portal will usually open at some point during the envoy destruction phase. If that invader comes in before you have killed that last envoy that drops the damage well, do not kill that envoy. Just deal with the invader and then do your damage. If you have that well going up, you're probably all going to be grouped up, which gives that invader an easy couple of kills and will give your primeval a lot of its health back, so you have to redo a lot of the work you've done with, with less ammo than you started off with and then they'll also feel pretty proud of themselves the other option is they invade in the middle when you have that well down and you guys are so busy taking care of the invader that you uh, wasted that whole damage phase so it's best just to deal with the invader and try to bait that invader to come in before you've actually initiated the damage phase by just kind of getting to that third envoy and waiting if you notice the invader takes a while to invade, then maybe just kind of go for it and see what happens and deal with your invader. If you got a full fire team, you could designate someone to be like, hey, if an invader comes, we need you to like protect our butts and make try to do your best to make sure we don't die because having someone on the time, as I mentioned before, on your team going specifically after that invader can be rather disruptive. And unless that person's a good invader, uh, you might you have a good chance of killing them. I, I've killed lots of invaders in my day. 
Okay, then for damage phase, make sure you guys use that heavy ammo and all that goodness once you have a couple of Primeval Slayer uh, stacks. I would say around three or four. All right, y'all, I really hope this video helped you guys out with some general tips of how to play. Um, there's lots of things that are really annoying with Gambit. Some of them would be people not playing the objective and just waiting by the invasion portal, which is ridiculous because most of these invasion quests have options where if someone on your fire team gets the kills, then it counts as progress towards you. And then there's also those people who will like suck in invading and then like you get like a team wipe a couple of times back to back and then they're like hog the invasion portal and you're like, why, dude? You're just like dying and not taking anyone with you. And then you got all those folks who do things like kill all the ads and don't pick up the moats until they just disappear. Now, what should you guys be using for clearing out all of those ads? I love using Recluse. Um, if you're using something like Thunderlord, I would only use Thunderlord once I know I have more ammo than I need to deal with an invader. And that's just kind of the strategy I, I go with. Anything that's good, like Breakneck Auto Rifle is pretty good for killing ads as well. All right, y'all, I really hope this video helped you guys out. Feel free to share it with your Gambit friends who perhaps need a little bit of help. And until next time, I am Church of Caboose. Have a great week and happy grinding, y'all.